Look at that. This is not a good idea. You're gonna have so much whiskey smell. We are doing the uh, the biggest things that ruin whiskey experience. Oh, I like this. According to whiskey lovers. Okay. Now, the uh, just a quick caveat before we dive in. Which whiskey lovers are we talking about here? Well, the ones in the whiskey tribe. Oh, okay. A community of thousands of whiskey lovers all over the planet. Yes. We asked them, hey, what ruined your whiskey experiences? Mm. Now, here's the caveat. The answers that we're going to get in our community are not going to be answers like putting in ice and putting in soda. No, because our biggest okay. rule is what? The best whiskey is the whiskey you like and the way you like to drink it. Yes. Because okay. when it comes down to personal choice, you can drink it neat, you can put it in ice, you can yeah. do soda, whatever the hell you want, you do you. Do you know what the number seven ruiner of whiskey experiences is? What? Wrong kind. Of glass. Oh, you're not wrong. Wrong kind of glass. Here, let me pour you a little open 14. I'll take it. Or when you go to a bar, yeah. this happens to me all the time. Yes. Right. And they're like, there you go. <laughs> you're like, wait, wait, what? So why, why is the why is this a no. big why is this a big deal to people who really enjoy whiskey? I'll show you. There's real reasons, and then there's the emotional reason. Fair, fair enough. Okay. Yeah. So look at how much whiskey that is in a Glencairn. Yes. That's pretty reasonable as a sample, right? Sure. So let's say you got a real Glencairn pour yep. of Oban 14. Right. Right? Okay, that's nice. That's about an ounce and a half ish. Yeah. And uh, look how much that looks in a glass. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Now try to smell both of those. It comes down to smell. The shape of the glass in yes. the Glencairn is going to do what as opposed to just a regular. The shape of the Glencairn is going to allow the he heavy alcohol fumes to go to the sides yep. and then funnel the rest of the nose into the middle and then smell it. Now you smell this one, it's just all coming out. You'll be lucky if you smell anything in that glass other than a vague hint of whiskey. Yeah, it's like at least 30 to 40% less uh, present on yeah. the nose. Now take a sip of each and you'll notice there will also be a difference because smell is so much of taste. So now here's the second emotional one. How does it feel? holding that glass with whiskey versus how does this feel and trying to drink out of it? You just did both. What's the difference for you? I feel like a fancy lad. And because half of our brain is the right brain pattern recognition non-reality part of our brain, mm -hmm. humans are susceptible to actual changes in experience altering the outcome of the feeling they have about what just happened. It's a lot of words. If it's fancy, you'll like it more. <laughs> now here's, here's the reason why this is the kind of answer you're gonna get from whiskey lovers because a whiskey isn't something you throw back in a shot at a party. It is very much an experience. Yes. For a whiskey drinker, the journey is the point. So, for the remainder, oh, just, really? so, just so you can empathize with the people. I'm bad at that. Empathizing with people, this is a training. This is a training regiment for you. Uh, the number six. Is it weird that this makes me feel like an alcoholic? <laughs> that, that I obviously have filled up my glass and have now made it down to this. You're sipping the dregs. Yeah. Uh, now, the number six biggest thing that ruins whiskey experiences is unclear pour sizes. Because you go to restaurants, mm -hmm. very rarely do they ever actually tell you how much of a pour it's going to be. Yeah. And even if they do, they often miss the mark. Yes, they do. So, there's three things that are standard in bar pouring. Yeah. Uh, if you're just going to do a shot, the industry standard is pretty much an ounce. Yeah. Right? If you're gonna drink a glass of whiskey or spirit of any kind neat, That's your mm, don't get typically they will pour you at least an ounce and a half mm -hmm. because they have anticipated that this is your sipping drink yep. as opposed to your shooting drink. Now, if you're at a true whiskey bar or a bar where they prize drinking classy spirits neat, <laughs> you may get up to two ounce pours in a neat serving. Sure. sure. Usually ounce and a half. If you order, even in a place like Glencairn, if you order a whiskey, they'll almost always measure out an ounce and a half. Some places who are not used to people ordering whiskey neat <laughs> will pour you an ounce mm -hmm. in a big old fashioned glass mm -hmm. and it'll just uh, like, sitting in the bottom like this and you're like, really? And the thing is, that's really not that much less, but it sure feels like it, doesn't it? On uh, the other end of that spectrum though, very often you'll get a restaurant and the people who's actually doing the, the pouring they're not familiar with how much they should be doing. Yeah, sometimes you win. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so in our community, I, like you know, a couple times a month. Oh yeah. Some, a couple times a month, somebody will post a picture and it's like a glass like this, that's a, you know a third of the way full yeah. with a really expensive whiskey. <laughs> and they're, I, just, they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just check and that was actually 
more than I intended to give you. Uh, there you go. Uh, I'm gonna go get my own. No, class. you're learning, Daniel. I am not learning. You're learning. You're empathizing with the people. Rex, I found a new glass. <laughs> Even better. Actually, if a restaurant came out with that, yeah, and whiskey in it, and then a side glass, and I you would, just refilled. I wouldn't even be mad. <laughs> the fifth, being a designated driver. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that sucks. But you know what? You're doing your people a solid. Somebody has to take one for the team, man. Yes, and sometimes it's you. Um, <laughs> so I felt awkward asking for your keys because you've been drinking. Mm -hmm. So I just parked. So you me. blocked me in. <laughs> So you can empathize with the people. Yeah. The fourth biggest thing that ruins whiskey experience is unclear prices on the menu. Oh, they just put names but no pricing? Yes, and it feels very fancy until you want to actually order something because price variation yeah, from, they're... you know, even even restaurant to restaurant, bar to bar. Yeah. I mean, there's always variation going from Huge local, variation. local markets across the country, but even in the same city, you can find a pour of like, um, you know, a Laphroaig. Yeah. It would be, you know, like eight bucks. Right. Um, as opposed to you go to a nicer restaurant, that could be a 30 damn dollar pour. Yeah. Well, and, and then there's other places where I've ordered just like a Glenfiddich 12, right. and it was $15. What do you, no, I'm not drinking out of that glass anymore. Empathize with the people. It's ruining my whiskey experience. <laughs> right. Now I understand if on some of the fancier ones that are hard to get, oh. you could have a market price listing. Sure. It just says market price. Yeah. And it just like the pappies, I would put market price. But if it's Glenfiddich 12, you know exactly how much that costs you and you can get it for the same price again tomorrow. The number three biggest thing that ruins whiskey experiences, spicy food. Oh, spicy food. Now this yeah, is the one that you, I agree. This is the one that you have the most amount of control over. Spicy foods and whiskey. It's the alcohol burn to compound the yeah. spiciness of the food. That hotness, that burn with the alcohol burn. It's a bit much. But sometimes you're going to like a friend's barbecue mm -hmm. or just remember that food is going to dramatically affect what you're drinking, of course. And so if you order spicy food, no, no. What? What in the world? You're empathizing. I am not eating that shit. You're empathizing. What are you doing to this me? This is a learning experience. Here we go. <sighs> this is, hold on. What does that say? Peanut. Sweet and salty Sweet nuts. Sweet and salty nuts. <laughs> you know what this is gonna be like? This is gonna be like Thai peanut. I want Spicy you to, Thai peanut sauce. I want you to feast on my salty nuts. Oh God. There you go. Dude, why does everything have to do with food? This is the chili, ha always... the chili habanero, Black Label Reserve. Of all the people in the El world Giteco. who you could pick, who this kind of shit really just no. tweaks them. No, here's it's here's, me. Here's this isn't this isn't just for shenanigans, Daniel. Whenever you can empathize with somebody, put yourself in their shoes. Yeah, you're that much more able <coughs> to come up with viable <coughs> solutions. Well, this is actually I'm kind of. Here's my guess. Yes. Because you picked the peanut thing. Yeah. Well, where is that common? Thai food. Yeah. I'm wondering if this is gonna taste vaguely like spicy Thai food. Uh, look, I was very intentional about the flavor profile of this thing I'm putting in. Oh, it actually didn't smell that bad. Just take a take a smell. Yeah. Oh, that's damn, dude. Okay. I may <laughs> save me a bite. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of all of a sudden. I'm okay. I'm kind of into it. What's the verdict? Oh God. Yeah? Yeah, that okay. flavor combination does not work. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Now, ah. uh, the solution, now that you've been inspired, inspired with the pain and suffering of oh, all these I people. I can't rinse my mouth. So the solution is, don't order spicy food. Ah. <laughs> wow, the alcohol burn really did revive the habanero. Yeah, no, it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. The number two thing that is the biggest Ruiner of whiskey experiences according to whiskey lovers all over planet Freak uh, Earth. Number two, do you know what this is? Uh, no. I wish it wasn't so common. It's the inexperienced bartender slash server. So we, we were at the uh look, we were at the kitchen oh, around yeah. the corner. You ordered, I think it was um an Isla of yeah, whiskey. I think I ordered Lafroig actually. You ordered it neat. Yep. Nice young lady. How did she bring it out? She brought it out on the rocks. In a Big glass. And a giant glass, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so there's like, and I'm big, looking at it, and it's I like a big glass of ice, some little scraps of whiskey down in here. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, I uh, no, nah, I ordered that neat, and she looked at me with this blank stare like she of like, what's that? Yes. Right. And uh, well, first, before, this is a restaurant problem because 
shitty training. Before we even got to that point, yeah, bar bartender is going to know what need is. Yeah. But it's very possible that they're going to have the same problem as this girl. You had to re 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 mm -hmm. repeat and spell the name of the whiskey multiple times. It's like, yeah, I'm sorry, we don't have that. It's like, what? It's right there. It's right there. It's right I'm there. looking at the bottle. So it's even, got a green bottle. Even on bartenders, it. if they don't, um, you know, move a lot of whiskey there, you're gonna say the name of a of a scotch or something. Yep. And if they don't know how to pronounce it, you're gonna need to help them. <laughs> you're gonna need to help them. Yeah. Don't take it out on them. It just means that they're company didn't train them appropriately. I mean, that happens at Total Wine to me all the time. Yeah. I have multiple times been corrected by Total Wine employees <laughs> with the wrong thing. Right. I had one employee one time tell me that Isla was pronounced Islay. Yeah. And I told them, uh, no, that's not actually true. They argued with me, and so I moved on. I, last week, I had one tell me that bourbon can only be made in Kentucky. <laughs> uh, while we were standing in front of the Texas whiskey section that had bourbon on the, anyway. But <laughs> Whenever they inevitably don't know something. Don't shit on it. It happens way more often than I find somebody that's yes. just on the ball. You want to be having with your whiskey, with your whiskey experience. You're so What's excited. number one? What's number one? What's number one? Okay. Are you ready? I was born ready, as long as it didn't require me to eat weird things. You know what? I, I kind of lied to you, Daniel. Oh. Uh, because I said number one wasn't you. Yeah. What is number one? <laughs> Bad company. It is you. Till the day I die. <laughs> <laughs> so by a long shot, this oh, is, I totally it, agree. it annihilated every other contender here in this list. Drinking with the wrong people. Yes. Yes, and I can totally it agree. It could be the most glorious whiskey known to man, and it could be the perfect glass and the, the, the perfect pour, and it's just, you know, it fucking it's free, ranges, all of these things. If you're drinking with people you don't enjoy being around, that ruins so much. You know what, very regularly A for lot me, of times you can control that, a lot of times you can't. Company parties, or forced gatherings, or the spouse's friends. Yes. <laughs> yes. The, uh, Especially in our community, the whiskey experience, um, the magnificent bastards in the whiskey tribe, whiskey is just kind of, you know, the excuse. It's mm -hmm. the thing that we're all gathered around and we're talking about. The main point is just to hang out and have fun and be ridiculous. Uh, and so, the, to have the tribe, people opting into spending that time with each other yep. online, we're looking at doing some local meetups here in the not too distant future. Yes. That's a lot of fun because it just takes whatever's in the glass, it takes it to another level. You're going to yes. enjoy it that much more. Again, that is true because remember we said the same thing about glass experience, the fancy glass makes everything better? Yes. So does cool people. Yes. I have had some of my favorite whiskey experiences in my life mm -hmm. drinking the cheapest fucking whiskey <laughs> you could get your hands on yeah. and had a blast. Yeah. Okay, you ready for the bold new experiment to overcome? He's working. He's I don't want to overcome anything anymore. And we're going to see if we can overcome. Dude, just no. I'm working. No, no. just I'm no. I'm working. No, just back up. Bring me that glass. No. We're going to see if we can overcome the suboptimal nosing with the big wrong kind of glass. Okay. And we're just doing like a, a standard bullet ride. It's too big on the top. Yep. Vapor's going past. Yep. We're going to funnel those those notes directly into your nose. Oh god. No. No. That's not that's not the point of a Glen Karen. No, it's to narrow and yeah. funnel. Are we duct taping this to my face? We're gonna tape it. We've got some straws. <laughs> you want one nostril's worth or two? I think you gotta go two. Really? To really give it the best, you know, best chance of success. Alright, let me zoom in. I'm thinking. Put them through the tape and then strap the tape up. Oh, no, I was gonna cover this and then poke them through the no, lid of the glass. No, I was gonna just tape this to your No, I'm not <laughs> taping it to my face. Yeah. I've got facial hair. No, it's fine. No, no, it's, it's fine. totally that's, not fine. That's fine. No, it's the facial not hair fine. Buffers the vapors. No, it totally doesn't do Mixes that. them up, stirs them up. That's not a thing. It makes them more lively. You're making up science. <laughs> more lively. Oh. Look at that. This is not a good idea. You're gonna have so much whiskey smell. <laughs> so what you're gonna do. Yeah, uh, I know. I good will idea. I will apply. No, I'll do it. <laughs> Here. Here. <laughs> well, now I look like I'm gonna rob the place. Yes. And also breathe underwater. Alright. This is like walrus smelling. You get it. You get it. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Nose, nose the whiskey. 
<laughs> the vapors are coming straight out the straw. <laughs> My eyes are watering. Uh, are you uh, getting those, those nuanced <laughs> The glorious bullet ride nuance notes. I can see how this would be super classy at a restaurant. <laughs> yes, I'm getting notes of, <coughs> of eucalyptus and regret. <coughs> uh, I got, that's whiskey in my nose. That's gross. And that really burns. You know what? I think it was a much classier way to do this. Oh, a classier way to do this? Bring your own glass. Bring your own glass. I totally agree. Here's to you, magnificent bastards. May you never be stuck drinking with Rex. What? 